Good morning, folks. We've got a full plate today. Tons of cool science news from the Earth to deep space, from cosmology to catastrophism, and a look ahead on our star. Starting there at spaceweathernews.com, we find the last 24 hours on the sun, and there isn't much activity at the moment. Polar coronal holes crossing center longitudes, and at the end, look to the 8 o'clock position. While there are a few sunspots on the disk, there appears to be a much more complex group just behind the limb at this time. Those will be visible and beginning to face Earth next week. Solar wind and geomagnetic conditions are quiet, so let's go to Mars. Folks, the InSight rover's mole machine is done. They were never able to get the probe down into the soil to conduct the test, so after 18 months, they've given up. The mission still does have other science that can go forward, but folks, this is the one that could have found subterranean microbes on Mars. Millions of people were excited for this, and it's not going to happen. At least not that they plan to tell us about publicly. Up next is something that hits both my current interest and my previous magnetic organic chemistry background working with new chemical entities. Venom has evolved to be highly cationic, positively charged. It's done this to seek out the anionic negative receptors in certain cells, but over time, snakes have evolved to present a positive amino acid on the outer membrane of those cells, which repels the incoming positive venom molecules. This is why snake bites often don't kill other venomous snakes. Up next, it's a solid nod to the aerosol forcing we've been heavy with the last year. But here, not only are the nucleation formation and particle attraction described in ways that promote the cosmic ray cloud forcing studies in existence, but get this, they're adding CO2 to the mix of major contributions. The more CO2 there is, the easier it is to form clouds, which cool, which is another reason why CO2 takes on an overly biased role in climate models. That's the other climate forcing we've been heavy with the last year. Up next is confirmation of the Gulf of Mexico super basin resources. Every time they look, it appears more and more past life met an end and was buried in the Gulf. What you don't see much in these papers or in the discussions is the discussion of the great floods and meltwater outbreaks sloshing across the plains and sweeping plants and animals into the Gulf. It is the number one collection point for the cyclical deluge in North America. Now stow catastrophism for a moment because we'll come back to it through the cosmos. I remember when Gaia mapped a billion stars and the concept nearly made my brain explode, but now they have gone to another level. Desi has mapped the sky far beyond the galaxy and now counts more than a billion galaxies. They are hoping to get a better grasp on the big picture, motion, and extrapolated history to learn more about dark energy. At the end of the day, their decade or so of work has instead just produced some incredible surveys of the sky. But speaking of incredible, here's the Whirlpool Galaxy with magnetic field tracing. This is the big topic to end the show today and come back to catastrophism, so let's dive deeper. There appears to be confirmation of the more universal scale of galactic halo fields. These fields organize the outer material of the galaxy, preventing collisions and excess light emission, making those regions harder to see, harder to nail down, and more likely to be mistaken for dark matter. Those external fields also help the rotational dynamics as they hide in plain sight, another thing blamed on dark matter. So, how did all that stuff get out there? In addition to the leftovers from galaxy formation and that which is blown out by supernova, the magnetic fields of the galaxy indeed transport this material, the dust and the plasma, right out into the circumgalactic and intergalactic medium. Not only does this do more to confirm the dipole into Taurus magnetic structure at the galaxy, but when they say that nearby neutron stars have excess X-ray signals that could be made by dark matter, remember, stars have jets too, magnetic fields, and stellar winds that push material out around them. But more importantly here, remember those external magnetic fields organize the dusty plasma, prevent collisions and extra emission. But it seems they forgot. Neutron stars lack that major magnetism. Their surroundings are not organized. They have more interactions and excess emission. Heading back a step to that galactic outflow, it's described exactly like the solar wind system outflow, which is not something new, but most people simply don't fully grasp the big picture of implications with this scalability. The solar wind-like outflow, the dipole to torus surrounding fields, produce a magnetic boundary at the equator. It's not flat. It undulates, ripples, and forms a wavy electric current sheet which contains the magnetic reversal of the system between the north and south fields. 
When Earth is hit by the sun's rippling sheet, we get global magnetic effects and induced electric currents. And when that happens to a star, the extra particle density statically attracted to the galactic sheet like a Swiffer duster in space allows you to deliver two known nova triggers to a star in one wavy ripple of that sheet. The solar flash, burning energy, the pieces of the nova shell, the energy to finish the magnetic excursion and unlock the low velocity zone to trigger the great floods, earthquakes, and volcanoes. Folks, we're only about five weeks away from our expected arrival of the new book. Pre-order today at otf.cells.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now it's 5.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.